Welcome to today's ministries. I'm Chris Alderete and my co-host today is... Jeff Tristan. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing good and thank goodness the weather has changed there a little go. bit, Chris. There you I, go. I, I was getting kind of, you know, that cold weather. I couldn't really get out and do the things I wanted to do, so... That's right. And you know, it is a beautiful day. It you know, is. the Lord has made it. It's just a great day. And we have some wonderful guests that are uh, acquaintances of yours, are they not? They sure are. And, and you know, I think we're blessed to have them in our San Antonio mm -hmm. medical community. Mm -hmm. Two really up and coming orthopedic surgeons. So I think it's going to be a great show. And so when he said the word orthopedic, I mean, we're talking about aches and pains of your bones. Yes. And so we want you to stay tuned because if you have a comment or a question, we'd love to hear from you. Just call us here at 734 5371. We're going to be talking about things like arthritis, right? Yes, ma'am. Lifting and bending and things like that. Absolutely. And uh, as you know, we get older and mm -hmm. the common tennis elbow and now uh, my dad just had a total knee replacement oh, my over goodness. the holidays and it's not an easy procedure mm -hmm. so you have to take care of yourself so so now we have these young minds and yes, these young uh, individuals that have a lot of experience and I was very impressed with our pre-interview uh, mm -hmm. today but and they've moved to our beautiful city of San Antonio they have. we'd like to welcome you want to go ahead and introduce them yes absolutely we have Jamie Lynch with us today mm -hmm. and we also have Dr. John Chance welcome so, how are y'all today? Thank you for having us. Sure, doctor. Thank you. Uh, Thank now, you. Dr. Chance, you have a group called the Northeast Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, right? Yes, Chris. Uh, this uh, group of uh, men and women uh, is a great team of orthopedic surgeons. Uh, many we'll years put the slide on the, sh on the screen. And this is your colleagues, right? Yes, Chris. Uh, we've been all, collectively, we've been in practice for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, we treat uh, uh, pretty much every orthopedic condition uh, in uh, pediatrics up to uh, a joint replacement okay. in uh, uh, more elderly people. You want to tell Chance, us who they are? Yeah, I was going to say, you want to mention? Yes, from left to right, that's uh, Dr. Brian Schultze, Dr. David Fox, Dr. Pat Simon, that's Dr. Lynch, and myself, and Dr. Rex Wilcox. Wow. And so it said Northeast Orthopedics. Whereabouts are, are y'all located? We have three locations, mm -hmm. one in the Stone Oak area, one up at Topper Wine and I-35, and one at uh, Village Drive near the Northeast Baptist Hospital. Oh, very good. So how long have you been a physician? Well, I uh, graduated from school in 1997, mm -hmm. Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Very good. I did my orthopedic training here in town at the Brook Army Medical Center. Mm -hmm. uh, once I completed my uh, orthopedic training, I went to Fort Hood, Texas, and finished out my Army uh, uh, obligation, I guess okay. is the best yeah. way to put it. Had a great time in the Army, uh, met a lot of good people, uh, uh, but my wife and I decided to come back to San Antonio. We fell in love with it uh, mm -hmm. on our first visit and are glad to be back here. Mm -hmm. Now, you have some military experience, too, do you not? <laughs> I do. Uh, I originally started in the Army as a combat engineer, mm -hmm. and uh, after finishing college, uh, I ultimately went to medical school and I was commissioned in the uh, Medical Corps, and that's where I served the majority of my time uh, in the Army as an orthopedic surgeon. We have another slide, don't we, of you? I yes, think. we do. Our second right. slide is of you, so tell us, because there's some young people here, and um, Yes, this Tell is a slide of me, and uh, this is when I was on deployment in Iraq. Wow. And these uh, three young ladies uh, were uh, patients of mine. Okay. And uh, that's just uh, one of their follow-up visits. Uh, mm -hmm. Really just a great opportunity to serve those people. Absolutely. You know, our show is called Today's Ministry, and healthcare is truly a ministry. And that uh, slide speaks a thousand sure words. Does. Because you have your education and your... Um, uh, expertise reaches out to other people throughout the world. I, f I felt very blessed to be able to serve overseas and uh, not just with our military but uh, uh, the coalition forces which included mm -hmm. the local mm -hmm. people. Yes well thank you for that and thank I'm sure so those much. young ladies felt very blessed. <laughs> so mm -hmm. now then we have another slide of you uh, well, Dr. This Lynch, is actually right? Dr. Lynch, who, Dr. Lynch, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about yourself and your bio. Absolutely. Uh, so I did most of my training actually in Chicago, Illinois. Okay. Um, my orthopedic training was done at Northwestern. Spent wow. my time learning how to take care of anything from a fracture all the oh, way to arthritis. Mm -hmm. um, 
that slide actually shows us when I was in my fellowship, and that I did a sports medicine and shoulder awesome. reconstruction fellowship. That was up in Michigan. With the Detroit Lions. Yeah, so that, wow. you know, that's the exciting part we yes. like to talk about. But I learned a yeah. lot of, of the basics on how to take care of a shoulder, okay. um, from just shoulder aches and pains all the way up to replacing the shoulder, and then all sports injuries all over the body. So um, the opportunity with the Detroit Lions was wonderful, and we were talking about this earlier these aches and pains that we have, mm -hmm. it also happens in the elite athlete. And wow. they are pushing themselves to a limit that we can see these overuse injuries and I can take what I've learned from them and bring that down to any level, the weekend warrior mm -hmm. or the person who just, you know, happened to trip and fall. So, um, you know, as a sports medicine orthopedic surgeon, I'm able to take care of a patient from nine years old to 99 years old. And this is including those, you know, a bunch of injuries that we'll talk about later, actually we'll go more detail about pathology or injuries. Mm -hmm. um, but also kind of a unique thing that I, I bring to the table is being a woman in orthopedics, there's not very many of us. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next slide that we have shows me working with the Perry Initiative. Mm -hmm. And I really, really wow. enjoyed this opportunity. This is a, a group that works with young women uh, generally in the high school age mm -hmm. and teaches them that they can do anything they really want to mm -hmm. and we indicate hey here's an opportunity in engineering or orthopedics we take them and we show them how to fix fractures and mm -hmm. suture and it was just a fun hands-on experience and these girls I mean, most of them absolutely love it they look awesome. at something they didn't think they could do before and they realize it's open to them so. and where did the girls come from this actually the last time we had this was in san antonio mm -hmm. wow. um and then the previous time was in that i was involved in it was in in michigan mm -hmm. but it happens all over the country wonderful and so i try to get into it whenever i can it's mm -hmm. just it, not always local. But what a great program what a for some cool. of these young ladies mm -hmm. to, to know that they can hey, there's no limitations. Mm -hmm. They Absolutely. can do it. So how did you end up in San Antonio? For, because I didn't know Chris's daughters also went. They to, were in Chicago. Yes, were in Chicago to school, well. graduate school. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great place. The Midwest <laughs> is wonderful, good people. But uh, after the 30 some years I spent up in the Midwest, I decided I needed warm weather. Okay. So the next step was to find out where I would fit in, and um, as through the interview process, I found a great group with Northeast Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, and we kind of, you know, gel together as a, a good group. And as Dr. Chance was saying, you know, together we take care of all orthopedic problems. Certainly, there's things I really like to take care of. Mm -hmm. We take care of all of it. You know, we take care of you know shoulders to fingers and hips to toes, and we even wow. see some back pain. So mm -hmm. we take care of it all. Oh, great. Wow. Now, how long has the group or the practice been in existence, Dr. Chance? Well, I think. Uh, I want to say it was 16 years or so, the, uh, Dr. Will Cox and Dr. Fox are uh, the senior members, and there have been some changes over the years. Uh, I've been with the practice five years, um, and uh, so it's kind of a mix of different experiences, which I think works well together. Well, you know, when you were talking about aches and pains, and right now quite a few of our viewing audience will maybe be listening and they're saying, oh, it's cold out there and you know maybe my arthritis you know uh, a lot of aging individuals might have some arthritis does the weather affect that I think so it certainly I can. mean it's if you have a little extra fluid in a joint and the barometric pressure is changing mm -hmm. uh, it, it basically is acting somewhat like a barometer mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's very common to hear that in the office when these weather changes occur especially around here in Texas and and when these aches and pains start, at what point should you go to a physician and what should you tell them? I mean, you know, because lots of times with managed care, it, you don't have that much time with your physician. So talk to our audience about how to prepare for your visit and what they should do and, you know, should they keep a log of their frequency of the pains and things like this? I think that's a, a great thing to bring up because I often tell my patients, when they tell me, oh, it catches, my, my shoulder catches a lot, mm -hmm. what should I do? Well, how often is a lot? Does it happen every day? Does it happen every other day? And if they do leave my office, I say, hey, keep an idea. How often does the pain happen? Write it down. How often is it catching, giving mm -hmm. out on you, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have a better idea of when they write it down, oh, this actually doesn't happen but every six months, so mm -hmm. it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But it seems like a big deal at the time. So um, if we have a better idea of what the how frequency. Frequency, frequent the problem is or what exactly how it's changing their life. Truly, every patient is different. Mm -hmm. If something is bothering them and they keep noticing it, it's probably time to get something done about it or at least evaluate it so we know what our options are in the future. Mm -hmm. Because when people say they have arthritis, I, I'll tell you, 
So many patients come in and say, well, I have arthritis. Well, who told you you had arthritis? Yeah. Was it diagnosed? <laughs> yeah. Or did you just say, you know, oh, my, yeah. my shoulder hurts, and someone said, oh, you probably have arthritis. Well, mm -hmm. we don't know that until we actually take images, plain mm -hmm. x-rays. And then we can evaluate that, and then we can make some decisions based on that. And, and when uh, diagnoses are made, you know, do you have all the facilities in your practice there to do the x-rays, and to do, or do they have to go to a certain place? Or Let us know about your practice. Yeah, our, each, each office has its own uh, x-ray machine, and so we do x-rays there in the office. Uh, we also have physical therapy there, so we can take care of you from start to finish. Great. And it's, it's very convenient for them. Oh, very good. As well as, and, and we'll get more clinical, I think, in the second segment, but I understand that you also have an interest in CrossFit. Yes. And what we like to do is educate our viewers on how to prevent some of these things. And we've talked a lot about diabetes and so forth. So tell us a little bit more about your interest in CrossFit. That's, that's a good thing to bring up as well because uh, it's become a sort of a, an exercise phase, mm -hmm. or craze rather, craze. Uh, where people are working out in a very intense manner. And this can be great for certain people. Um, and even within a, a, a large range or type of athlete, it can be used. It just has to be modified sometimes. And that's what I try to bring to the table. People are doing Olympic style lifting and things like that. And it can be wonderful. And you can see these big changes in your body composition, meaning going from having a lot of fat to changing it to muscle. And that helps people in a whole, um, overall having more muscle is helpful. And so, I like when people are doing things like this, but they need to do it appropriately. So have I seen injuries from this? Yes. And I won't always say, oh, well, you have to stop doing everything. Some mm -hmm. people are scared to go to the doctor when they have an injury in this setting because they think their doctor's gonna say, we well, can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not our goal. Our goal is to try to figure out what the problem is, see how we can avoid it, make it better, and get you back to doing what you wanna do. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you can always go back to everything, Right. But we can make modi modifications. Maybe you're doing a, a lunge. Well, don't do the lunges deep, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> just making some changes so that people can uh, do what they want to do. If someone comes in and tells, I run every single day and I have to run earlier, I'm not going to be able to live my life. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm not going to say you can't run, but I may ask you to do some things differently, <laughs> mm -hmm. like cross-training, add biking in there, add swimming in there, things like that. And so uh, you were talking about activity. Tell us, because you also said the word diabetes. Tell us how important activity every day is. Extremely important. And I, I mentioned the body composition change. If we can get people to be more active, um, we're going to reduce the body fat. We, I've seen people go from having uh, diagnosed diabetes and have to be on medication to beginning to exercise and start to eat properly and then they get off the medication. And that's what we want to Great see. Outcomes. Great, Great outcomes. Great outcomes. And it's something that, that. It's, it's simple to say it's very hard to incorporate. And one thing I tell all of my patients, they come in, they have knee pain, they have diabetes, they have ankle pain, things like that. If they lose the weight, they're gonna help decrease the pain that, because your knees, your ankles, your hips, you see so much body weight. Yeah, so if you reduce a small amount of body weight, you're gonna see an improvement in the pain, but also you're gonna help yourself on the whole systemic level, which is the diabetes side of things. Mm -hmm. and, and how do I do that? Well, I tell my patients, if you do something, pick something in your diet, one thing you know is bad, I generally stick with soda or pop. Mm -hmm. Get rid of it completely mm -hmm. and see what change it makes. It's not easy, but pick one thing that you know is bad, get rid of it. I'm not telling you to change everything yet. It's a start. Nice. So that's one option that I tell patients. And about activity, simple walking every afternoon, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's a, a great thing to say too, but sometimes their knees hurt so bad that they can't walk. So mm -hmm. what do you do in that case? A recumbent bike, which is a bike where you lay back a little bit, or the elliptical machine, the elliptical or swimming. Great at taking weight. Swimming yeah. is wonderful exercise. Mm -hmm. People don't like to do it when it's a little cold, but mm -hmm. it, these are things, modifications, that we mm -hmm. talk about that a lot. But, you know, we have had people from uh, different organizations, and we had someone from the Y, and Correct. all their pools are heated and they're, they're all indoors. heated at 92 to 94 degrees, and as you know, your body becomes buoyant, and you're able to do a lot of these activities you couldn't do on land. Absolutely. So they need to take advantage of that. So those are great. I think the, the main thing is people have to be compliant. Don't mm -hmm. you think, Dr. Chance, is, is getting them to understand, hey, you only have one body. We can't trade it in like a car. But right. it's changing that behavior. Right. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's changing that behavior. And so, you know, we're having a great discussion with Dr. Jamie Lynch and Dr. John Chance. And I know our audience has some questions. So if you have some comments or questions, we want you to call us here at 734 5371. We're getting ready to take a short mm -hmm. break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the disease processes specifically. But remember, if you have a question, you can call in at any time here at 
5371. We'll be back in just one moment. If your pregnancy test comes back positive, it can be a total shock. You may be wondering how you can afford to be a mom right now, especially with your school or work schedule. Here's the good news. There is help. There's a nearby woman's center that can help you completely, confidentially, and give you free advice. If you think you're pregnant, help is here. Call now or go online today. Each day, the world is blessed by the heroic dedication of holy Catholic priests serving in our parishes and religious orders, in nursing homes and hospitals, and as military chaplains around the world. Since the secular culture is often quick to criticize Catholic priests, it's so important for us to offer our prayers and gratitude for the countless holy Catholic priests who serve humanity with courageous virtue and dedication to Jesus and the gospel. EncouragePriest.org was launched by the Catholic media apostolate CatholicsComeHome.org during the year for priests to support our priests and promote vocations. By visiting EncouragePriest.org, you'll be able to help the priests in your life through spiritual bouquets, written or video greetings, and collar holler e-cards. Let's pray daily for our seminarians, priests, bishops, and our Holy Father who bring us the sacraments and help guide our path to heaven. Thank you for joining us in this apostolic mission of EncouragePriest.org and CatholicsComeHome.org. PovertyUSA.org and get involved. Welcome back to today's ministries. Well, Chris, we've had a great show so far. That's and, right, and we had a caller. And we had a caller. So, what the question was pertaining to diabetes. Yes, and her name is Linda, and thank you for watching, mm -hmm. Linda. And uh, she wanted to know if you're diabetic or is there such a thing as a borderline diabetic. And so, uh, I believe uh, Dr. Lynch will go ahead and tackle this question. Uh, it's a great question. Um, yes, there is what people will call borderline diabetic. Uh, and I generally have my, my primary care doctors, like my family practice, um, physicians take care of this problem specifically. On the physical side of things, I say, okay, we need to exercise, we need to find what works for you, and that's going to help. But also, sometimes you need medications, and that's going to be done by your primary care doctor. There's a level in the blood that they check what your glucose level is or your sugar level, and that can give the, the doc a better idea of what the problem is. Do you have full you know, diabetes, or are you kind of at that edge? When people say you're at that edge, it means you need to make a change, mm -hmm. so you don't have to get on the medication. And it's easily, the way, best way to start is with physical activity and changing your diet. Well, great. And that borderline means that you can uh, make it better before it progresses into full-fledged diabetes. Absolutely. And so it's kind of like you've been given an extra warning. little warning yeah. mm -hmm. uh, to be able to, uh, at the early stage, in mm -hmm. other words, we often talk about prevention, but if you have just been given this warning, Linda, we would love for you to Great maybe question. engage in uh, activity and keep up with your primary care physician Absolutely. to monitor your sugar or, or your glucose level. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you for that answer. And I also wanted to bring up Dr. Chance. If you can talk a little bit, I understand you're now Chief of Surgery at Northeast Baptist. And if you can talk about the importance of continuation 
of physical therapy, especially with total knee replacements. Sure. Can sure. you expand on that a little bit? Yes. The uh, we do a lot of total joints uh, at the hospital where I was just uh, selected chief. Uh, that's Northeast Baptist Hospital. Um, we have a great uh, uh, joint replacement program, and I think what is key to our success is physical therapy right after the surgery. But also what's probably more important is continuing that therapy uh, after you leave the hospital, whether that's at home with a therapist coming to you and we help make those arrangements or a, a rehab facility. Um, and then in our practice, we keep a close watch on our patients uh, after the surgery. We check their motion. If we have any concerns, we may make an adjustment, but we really want to get as much motion early on because that uh, leads to a, a more successful joint. I understand you have a physical therapy slide that you can yes. uh, show us it's because is it the case that they're actually getting physical therapy? I mean, walk us through what's protocol once surgery is done. Is that a, a clinic that you have there? Yes, that's one of our offices. Uh, I believe that's Hardy Oak. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have, uh, like I said, three locations and they're all uh, well fitted with uh, great physical therapist. The, uh, the protocol for physical therapy after a total joint is often therapy the same day of surgery. We get wow. them up out of bed and get them moving right away so that it, it gives them some confidence uh, after that type of surgery that mm -hmm. they can do it. And, and the day starts right then. And then we have uh, you know, hands-on training uh, with the physical therapist daily until they leave the hospital. Quite often when people have the knee replacements or something, it's painful right afterward, but so they don't want the therapy and so that's why it freezes up is the term that I've heard mm -hmm. many times. And so you're able to manage that pain while they're doing their therapy. And that's something different, is it not? Yes, and there are, there are different modalities uh, for pain management uh, in the immediate post-operative period as well as in the uh, post-op once they get home. And uh, we've, we've done a lot of uh, 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 investigation into this and we use uh, a multifaceted approach using the anesthesiologist and some specialty blocks mm -hmm. uh, that block some of the nerve pain and then using a variety of medications not just narcotic medications but other medications that may act on nerves and uh, that might uh, decrease inflammation and use them together okay. so that uh, they have a better experience. Great. Well that's great because you know quite often there is a fear of, of any patient having that type of surgery and sure. they're saying oh but my friend you know said you know uh, the surgery went well but I didn't want to do the therapy afterward it's all uh, together it has to be done together probably the toughest part is physical therapy afterward yes. and, the, yeah. and the joint club helps a lot because we give them give all the patients information beforehand not just from your doctor once or twice mm -hmm. but then from a group together so everyone learns together what they're going to have to do you still have to work very hard mm -hmm. yeah you have to work it's a commitment yeah, it's you commitment. know it's you're gonna a make commitment a commitment and speaking it it. from personally you know my dad i just i'd have to get on him and mm -hmm. call him and i hope he's not watching right now but <laughs> it, 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 they have to be compliant sure for to get them where they need to be so i think we've got some other slides do we not dr yes. lynch regarding some of the syndromes and right. so forth that we're going to introduce we have in one on overuse syndromes well i'd like to start just to give you a brief overview um mm -hmm. we're going to start talking about overuse issues meaning things you do over and over again that can lead to pain uh, as well as acute injuries something for example if you have a fall and followed by talking a little bit about arthritis and i'm going to focus mostly on the upper extremity and dr chance is going to focus mostly on the lower extremity so Patients come into my office very frequently and say, oh, I can't sleep at night on my shoulder, it hurts too bad. Or uh, when I lift my arm overhead, it hurts really badly. Uh, that problem can oftentimes be a bursitis. It's a, there's a fluid-filled sac called the bursa, and that protects multiple areas of the body, any pro bony prominences or tendons. And we can see that on the elbow. We can see that up in the shoulder, pretty much all over the body. Um, and we can also see problems over time with rotator cuff tears. So tendons can, it, uh, can uh, uh, actually start to degrade over time, mm -hmm. um, overuse. It doesn't have to be caused by a fall. So that's another issue that we deal with. And we talked about earlier, tennis elbow, mm -hmm. tennis elbow mm -hmm. and golfer's elbow. All these are tend to be overuse. So to, to go into the next slide, we talk about one diagnose that early. We want to see the problem, know what it is, and talk about ways we can make it better. So that can be just through activity modification, changing the things you do, um, and I didn't write this down, but 
cryotherapy or ice. Using ice a lot can help because it is a better way of reducing inflammation without having to take any medication for that. But sometimes we have to add medication. Medication can be anti-inflammatory medications to reduce the swelling and the inflammation or very limited amounts of narcotics for this problem. I don't think that's the best way to treat this problem. Mm -hmm. Another option is an injection, corticosteroid injections. So we're able to put local anesthetic with a corticosteroid, which is an anti-inflammatory, directly in the area of the problem. And so those are ways we can take care of that. And I, I have to also add the use of physical therapy for non-operative issues. Oftentimes we can do physical therapy and we don't need to do th surgery, which is wonderful. Right. So those are the overuse things. Then going on to the more acute issues when somebody has a fall or an injury, um, and I'm talking here we can also see rotator cuff tears. So the tear can happen when you have a fall or you can dislocate your shoulder. The shoulder can pop out of socket and pop back in, or you may even have to get it put back in for you. You can also see problems with sprains and strains. Um, and some of these are, other problems are like fractures or broken bones. Mm -hmm. You can break your collarbone, your shoulder, your elbow, and, all, and your wrist, we see a lot of those fractures. So all these things we take care of, and we take care of them in different ways. So going on to the next slide, we talk about the fact that we can treat some of these non-operatively. Sometimes you just need a brace, sometimes you just need those medications, those things we talked about before for overuse injuries. Uh, other times we have to talk about surgical options, okay? Sometimes we have to do surgery. And if it's a, open fra a fracture, for example, you break a bone, we often have to do an open surgery. We have to cut the skin, look at everything, put everything back together, put a plate and screws on. As you can see in this slide here, the picture on the top is of the broken shoulder. The picture on the bottom is after a plate and screws have been put on. Those are through an open procedure. Other things can be treated with arthroscopic procedures, small little poke holes, placing a camera inside and using instruments to fix, for example, a rotator cuff. Sometimes in the elbow we can do that as well. So uh, there's just different ways to treat that. Uh, I don't want to interrupt, but sure. we do have a caller on the oh, line. Sure. She does not mm -hmm. want to ident be identified, but okay. she said that she's 79 years old mm -hmm. and that she says that her spine what exercises could she do for her spine? She said she had a herniated... A herniated, I believe, disc or yes. something, but she wanted to know different types of exercises at 79 years old. Well, I could get up and show you some, but what I, what I actually recommend is you actually see your doctor because there are some really important things to make sure of for, first. We need to make sure there's no weakness, no numbness and tingling, that there's nothing that has to be done before you start your exercises. And I generally recommend directed exercises through physical therapy to start. Because even if you get a piece of paper to show you the exercises, sometimes it's hard to do, or you may be doing it wrong, and you may cause more damage. More damage. So I think, number one, make sure there's nothing else going on. Make sure you take care of it from your doctor's standpoint, and then Damn, start the physical therapy and the exercise. Well, we also have another call, and now it's for Dr. Chance, Correct. and Julie's on the line. Welcome, Julie. How are you today? Can you repeat the question? Do you remember? Julie, are you on the line? I am. Okay. Uh, Dr. Chance is here. What is your question? Um, I've heard about joint injections for knee arthritis, and I was wondering if it was an option for me. Um, I've been told I have early arthritis. Well, thanks for the call, Julie. Uh, I think you're probably speaking of uh, what we commonly call the rooster comb injections, a uh, very common treatment uh, here in the community. It's been around for many years. Uh, the, the main use of it is for arthritic conditions where uh, the cartilage is starting to break down in the knee and causing symptoms. I think it's a great treatment option if you uh, do have diagnosed uh, arthritis or degenerative changes and you have not responded to some of the basic first-line treatments which are activity modification, uh, physical therapy, and some over-the-counter medications. But uh, if you have any uh, questions about that further, definitely we can take care of that in the office. Uh, you may not even need them. Uh, but thanks for the question. Dr. Chen, do you mind repeating the phone number in case she's watching right sure, now? Sure. Our office phone number is 210-477-5151. And thank you so much for watching you. and your call, Julie. I want to remind you, if you have a comment or a question, just call us here at 734 5371. We'll go ahead and continue now with Dr. Lynch and you were talking I think we're at also yeah, shoulder. We're, we're, we're talking about the arth uh, opportunity to do arthroscopic procedures for certain injuries which is a camera and the instruments with small poke holes. After surgery we still have to get you back to your play, get you back to the field, back to just daily activities, things like that. And physical therapy can help with that. Sometimes you can do the exercise on your own but sometimes we need to get you directed so that's helpful. 
Um, on the next slide, we can talk about shoulder arthritis. And I love taking care of shoulders at all levels. So this is something that's pretty close to me. And when I see a patient that has arthritic change, we talked about, well, do you really have it? Well, we take x-rays first and we see, and you can see on this slide, a picture of somebody with arthritis. That's the wear and tear of the articular cartilage that coats the end of the bone. And so now the bone can't roll around as easily as it was before. Um, very painful for certain people. The shoulder is not as common as the knee and hip, and Dr. Chance will talk about that in a moment. But there are different types of arthritis. There's degenerative, so that's the wear and tear. There's inflammatory, like rheumatoid arthritis, that can also affect the shoulder. And there's traumatic, so if you have a fall, dislocate your shoulder, and this happens a lot, you can have that type of arthritis down the line. Well, before we get into the actual treatment, we have another caller on the line, Terry. Welcome to today's ministries, and she has a question for Dr. Chance. Hello. Hello, Hello. come on in. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can. Yes. Oh, I have a question for Dr. Lynch. Okay. Dr. Lynch. Okay. What is your question? So I, I dislocated my shoulder when I was 18 playing basketball, and um, you know it's been several years since then, but recently I've dislocated it a couple times. It seems like um, I've, I've done it maybe twice this year. Okay. You know, is that something that like can be you know treated inoperatively, or do I need to you know and see somebody like you? It's definitely a good idea to get be seen by a physician at this point, and I actually love taking care of this problem. If you're when you dislocated these last times, did you have to go to the emergency room to have the shoulder put back in place? Well, I used to, but it seems like I'm I'm getting more comfortable putting it in myself. Okay. So what happens when you dislocate your shoulder is that all that tissue around the shoulder can actually loosen up a little bit. And sometimes it's it does require an operative procedure and, and it can be as easy as just tightening up some of that soft tissue. But we wouldn't really know those answers until we come in and see the x-rays and potentially get further imaging. So absolutely you set up an appointment because this is something that's very important. You don't want to leave this alone. You Great. need to get it checked out. Great. Well, thank, thank you for thank your you call. Thank you very call. much. And we also have another caller mm -hmm. on the line. Terry has a question for Dr. Chance. Welcome, Terry, to today's ministry. Thank you for your call. Hello? Yes, Terry. We also have another caller on the line. Terry has a question for Dr. Chance. Welcome, Terry, to today's ministry. TV on. Can you turn down your television, please, Terry? Yes, Terry. Yes, Terry. A few technical yeah. difficulties, yeah. but now, Terry, yeah. go ahead and ask your question. Oh, I we lost, lost her. Lost her yeah. Maybe she'll call back. Well, <laughs> she'll, she'll call back, I'm sure. <laughs> well, we're, well, that was a great question uh, with the gentleman uh, regarding his shoulder, but we're, t we're going to continue on the arthritis treatment. Right. So go ahead, Dr. Lynch. So there's another slide for the arthritis treatment. Um, again, uh, options that we have. Maybe first we start with physical therapy. Maybe it's really an imbalance of the muscles. If we can get those stronger, the shoulder won't feel as much of that discomfort. Um, other options are the anti-inflammatories we discussed earlier. It also can do an injection. That can really allow people to deal with the problems that they're having for a long period of time. At the end, sometimes we have to talk about surgery. Oh, mm -hmm. And the picture here shows a, a surgery that has been done for a particular problem, uh, including arthritis as well as a rotator cuff tear. Um, but there are a variety of different options, but we won't know what to do until we see the shoulder and see. see the person. Well, you have a caller on the line. Jackie, I believe. Yes, Jackie. Welcome to today's ministries. What is your question, Jackie? Hello. When I jog, my knee swells up sometimes. So every time before I go jogging, I have to take Advil to help with the pain. Which type of doctor would you recommend I see? That's a great question. Um, you obviously want to make, remain active. It sounds like you're sort of pushing through some of the discomfort and the swelling right now. I would recommend um, either seeing me or your primary care doctor to start. Sometimes, depending on your insurance, you kind of have to do, go through the, the order of things. But um, you don't want to keep pushing through an injury like this or a problem like this because with swelling in your knee, your knee actually sort of sh shuts down. That big quadricep muscle in the front can shut down, and this can lead to further injury, making things worse. So absolutely want to get this evaluated. You don't just want to take medication to cover up the discomfort. We need to figure out what's going on. Great. Okay. Thank you for the call. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Now I want to remind you, our viewers, if you have a comment or a question, just call us here at 734-5371. Now we're going to go ahead. We've been talking about arthritis. I believe so. I know now. Dr. Chance, are you going to talk to us a little bit about some other overuse syndromes that we have? Yeah, I think uh, 
uh, some of these will overlap a little bit with what Dr. Lynch spoke about, but uh, we'll cover a few things in the lower extremity. Well, I believe we have Terry back on, Dr. Okay, Chance. Right. So, hello, Terry. Hi. Um, I've been painting my shoulder for about a year, and I notice it mostly when I when I reach away from my body or when I sleep on that side. Can anything be done for that? Sure, that's a very good question. It's a very common complaint in our office. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds like uh, it could be shoulder impingement syndrome, which is just where those soft tissues in the rotator cuff region uh, become impinged, and um, that pain can lead to weakness in the shoulder. So when she's reaching away from the body, the shoulder just doesn't work right. So uh, it's uh, very treatable, often non-surgically. Uh, usually when they come into our office, we'll examine them and uh, take radiographs and uh, get an idea of uh, is it more impingement or could there be a rotator cuff tear and they, they sometimes you can figure that out just on exam. And she needs to kind of document when she comes to speak to you about how often the pain is happening, right? Yeah, that's very important as well as uh, what specific activities seem to make it worse that's and right. what makes it better. Okay. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching, thank you. Terry, thank you, and thank Terry. you for your question. Uh, you might want to repeat the phone number of where they can contact you. Area code 210-477-5151. Okay. Great. They have three locations. Three locations, All correct. over the city. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they're willing to uh, even answer questions after this show at their, at their offices, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Sure. And um, the good thing is that we have a lot of callers calling in, Chris, mm -hmm. and there's going to be more questions, so be ready. We're going to have those. We're going to pass those to, to you all. Okay. But I know you were talking to us a little bit about overuse syndromes. Do you want to continue? Sure. And so in the lower extremity, just as in the upper extremity, uh, overuse syndromes are very common, especially around the knee and the ankle. Uh, as Dr. Lynch said, early diagnosis is the key. We can really get you back faster if we figure out what you have and get the treatment done quickly. Uh, and that includes physical therapy type modalities, uh, medications to include injections, and sometimes uh, short-term splinting to give that soft tissue a rest and let it recover. Uh, and finally, conditioning is the key. If you treat yourself like an athlete, even if you're just exercising for good health, uh, you're going to be at a lower risk of getting those overuse syndromes. And that includes warming up your body before you work or exercise and then cooling down properly. Uh, and as Dr. Lynch mentioned, cross-training or varying your activities is very important to avoiding those injuries. And you mentioned the word cooling down. Explain that mm -hmm. to our audience. Well, cooling down can, uh, can mean slightly different things depending on what you're doing. Let's say you're doing a very uh, aggressive exercise, you're going out for a jog. Uh, once you finish that run, it's good to uh, walk for a little while and let your heart rate and, and everything start to calm down and, and get back to a normal state. Let your muscles uh, adjust from that high demand uh, situation back to a more normal state. And then uh, finishing off with some stretches so that uh, those muscles get back to where they need to be uh, and reduce the risk of uh, uh, injury. Injury. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, thank so you. I think many times we have to just listen to our bodies because mm -hmm. I know I'm getting to that point where I don't, I'm in denial mm -hmm. and then I wake up and I'm like, oh my goodness. So we have to truly listen to our bodies, mm -hmm. you know. Sure do. Um, we have uh, another slide that I think we're going to go over well, here. We're going to have to take a short break oh, in just okay. a second, but we want to remind all of our viewers to call us here at 734-5371. It's time for us to take a short break and we'll be back in just one moment. She's sucking her thumb. She's so beautiful. That's our son. She's got my nose. With new advances in medical technology, we now have a window to the womb that reveals your unborn baby who looks a lot like you just weeks after conception. Now we know an unborn baby is a human life. See what we've been missing.
What have you done for your marriage today? I gave a huge hug this morning, like a really big squeeze. She got a really short haircut that she hated, and I wrote her a note and put it up on the mirror saying that she was a cute girl with cute hair. I got him mustard and mayonnaise for his sandwich when we were having lunch. Today we've actually organized a date night tonight. And silverware and napkins. Wasn't that wonderful? What have I done for my marriage today? Wow, that is a great question. I took the baby while she worked. I suppose I I, I didn't yell at him for anything yeah, at all. Done. I got up with the baby while he slept. Yeah. I've carried my wife's purse. What have you done for your marriage today? What have I done? I listened to my wife uh, when we talked on the telephone today. Well, I've done today what I usually do, and that is obey. She really likes it when I listen. What have you done for your marriage today? Little things can make a big difference. For ideas, go to foryourmarriage.org. A message from the Catholic Church. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it either. I wouldn't do it. 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 Uh, you know, I'd never do it. Don't mess with Texas. I wouldn't do it. Don't mess with Texas. <laughs> Welcome back to today's ministries. Well, we're at our last segment, and Chris, we've had quite a few callers so far, have we, sure we not? We have, but this is a popular topic. It sure is. So please feel free to call us at 210-734-5371. So we're going to just pick up where we left off, Dr. Chance, and will you continue with some of your acute injuries that you're going over? Sure. Uh, some common injuries we see in the lower extremity uh, in the acute uh, timing is ACL or anterior cruciate ligament injuries mm -hmm. uh, very common you see these a lot or hear about them on television because a uh, 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 sports uh, uh, professional sports athlete um, has an injury it usually takes them out for the rest of the season uh, so uh, that's something that often requires surgery because the the knee or the ankle becomes very unstable with the ligament injury uh, meniscus tears are very common in, in young and older people uh, as we age, that meniscal tissue, which is inside the knee, acts like a little cushion, uh, becomes degenerative and just kind of cracks and splits. And uh, sometimes the pain just resolves on its own and sometimes it doesn't. And those are, those are the times we should probably look at it and, and uh, we want to get that pain out of there so your muscles don't get weak and you, you uh, uh, lose that muscle tone. Uh, fractures are very common, uh, especially around the ankle. and. Uh, those occasionally can be treated non-surgically, but often uh, they do require surgery. And then sprains and strains. Those are the soft tissue injuries around the joints. Um, most often they'll heal on their own, but uh, they often do require some activity modification and physical therapy. Dr. Chen, I have a question. So once again, another family member. Mm -hmm. She just says, oh, my knee's killing me again. I'm just living with this pain. When, how, what is, as far as people that are going with pain, what would be your recommendation after a week, two weeks? When should they go see you? Well, I think if you have an ac acute onset of pain, for, and you can associate it with uh, an exercise activity, and uh, you know it's it's controlled with over-the-counter medication, I think at, at a minimum two weeks uh, to see if some of the inflammation just settles two down, weeks. modify her activity. And, oh, I think uh, we have another caller okay. on the line. Yes, so, we do. Hello, how are you doing? Hi. My name is Sophia. Um, I have a question for the doctors. I fell about three weeks ago and sprained my ankle, and I still had some swelling in my ankle. What do they recommend I do to get that swelling down? Well, uh, the the rice modality, rest, ice, compression, which is just using an elastic uh, ACE wrap, um, and then elevation. Uh, if okay, repeat that one more time. Okay, rice. rice. Okay. Rest, uh -huh. ice, compression, and elevation. And elevation. Uh, if it's not getting better, it may be worth getting an x-ray just to see if uh, you might not have a, a small fracture. That's not unusual either. Um, it, severe ankle sprains can sometimes be uh, mild uh, ankle fractures. Mm -hmm. In and addition, oh. it takes a long time for these things to get better too. Mm -hmm. So, But the best thing you can do, and ice is key in that whole thing. If you can ice three to four times a day, 
20 minutes at a time, taking it off, of course, put something between your skin and the ice. That's going to help bring the swelling down. And most of us have jobs where we're on our feet all day long. So at the end of the day, it's probably gonna be a little bit more sore than it, than it was at the beginning of the day, but keep that like elevated at the end of the night and ice like crazy, and it's gonna help. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. For your question. Along that line, as far as being non-weight bearing, because that, uh, that's holding up all your weight, do you recommend them to try to get something to help them be non-weight bearing when they have a bad sprain like that? Yeah, I think uh, if, if it's painful to walk on, then using crutches or um, they have those little scooters you can rent, mm -hmm. uh, which are uh, a little easier to get around with, uh, just until you can bear weight. And that sometimes takes a few days at a minimum. Yeah. When you were saying about um, give it rest, it's up to the individual though, right, as far as the length of time and how they feel when they feel better because, you know, some individuals, every person's mm -hmm. different, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you have different degrees of sprains. Mm -hmm. And so if it's a relatively mild sprain and, and you get right on it as far as the treatment modality, uh, it, I think it resolves more quickly. quickly. Uh, if it's a more severe strain, it may take a little longer uh, for those tissues to, for that inflammatory tissue to settle down and uh, be become more comfortable. Okay. Well, I think we have some slides on arthritis and that's very common. And so if you can kind of go over that with sure. us, Dr. Chance, as well. Uh, early arthritis, uh, or I'm sorry, early diagnosis is, uh, I think, very important when you're uh, discussing arthritis. The idea is that you want to slow that process. Um, I often use the analogy of uh, a car tire to d discuss arthritis in the knee, especially because the cartilage is what's wearing down, and it depends on how you use that cartilage through activities, um, injuries, and then genetics also play a role as far as how long that cartilage is going to last you. And so if we can diagnose it early, we have modalities to slow that process and uh, keep your joints strong. Uh, the, uh, as Dr. Lynch mentioned, rheumatoid arthritis, gout, uh, are inflammatory type arth uh, arthritic conditions that can uh, advance the arthritis more rapidly. So we want to keep that in control. Um, the, the slide that I think you had up there showed an x-ray of uh, some more severe arthritis where the, the bone's actually touching the wow. other side of the bone mm -hmm. there. And osteophyte is a, uh, the word we use for uh, bone spurs. Bone spurs are probably the more common word that mm -hmm. most people have heard. And that's just the reaction of the bone to that stress. So it's bone on bone. Bone yeah. on bone, the bone's getting stressed and it's just trying to lay down some extra bone and you start getting the spurs. Uh, some of the treatment modalities we use uh, in, uh, for arthritis Physical therapy, very important. We know that keeping the muscles strong around a joint reduces pain. Uh, keeping your weight in check, as we discussed earlier, also very important. Injection treatments include corticosteroid injections, as well as the rooster comb injections, which we discussed in that uh, caller's question. Mm -hmm. uh, those are two great options. Uh, bracing often helps patients uh, maintain their activity level until they uh, are ready for surgery. Uh, and then finally, medications. Oftentimes we can keep people going for many years before they have to discuss surgery and ultimately uh, the surgery is a, a joint replacement and uh, it's a very successful operation. Uh, knees, hips, uh, shoulders, uh, very successful in relieving pain of arthritis. Very good. Well the other thing too is your, your practice uh, also has some informative lectures that will um, be open to the public for, uh, for the community. You want to mention some of those? I see one here coming up in March. That's correct. I, uh, that uh, lecture is going to be at the Northeast Baptist Hospital and uh, there's the date there on the screen. Uh, we're going to uh, just have a general lecture about uh, orthopedic care. Uh, they'll have uh, dinner provided. Great. And uh, just uh, if you'd like to attend, give them a call and let them know you're coming. Okay. The, uh, the other another. one is uh, actually for healthcare professionals, so nurses, doctors, uh, physical mm -hmm. therapists even, um, that may be interested in updating their, uh, their it's orthopedic update. So mm -hmm. we talk about all different problems from shoulder all the way down to toes, even including spine. So uh, that's nice for CME credit for okay. or the continuing medical education And that for one's those. offered, is that April 5th? A is April 5th, yes, okay. correct. And it's a, it's a full day oh, of events, okay. yes. All right. And both of you will pre be presenting at these? 
Uh, myself and Dr. Simon, who is another partner of mine at the group, will be uh, presenting at that. And we bring in all different um, types of physicians as well, radiologists, pain specialists, um, and, and different orthopedic surgeons around the country, uh, the oh. uh, community. Community. Mm -hmm. What okay. about, we've been talking about all these great procedures and everything. Let's talk about the insurances. That's what they're going to want to know as far as what type of insurance plans you guys have. And what the cost. And what the <laughs> cost, yeah. That's we essentially take all insurances. Medicare, Medicaid? Yes, and, and if, there, if you have any questions, please call our office. We can make sure with all the different insurance changes that are going on, and some people have secondary insurances, we can answer those questions to make sure you're comfortable you know, making that appointment. Getting into and the workers' office. comp, there's someone that sees We do have uh, folks in the office that take care of workman's comp as well. Very good. And uh, one thing people often ask is TRICARE. We mm -hmm. actually do take TRICARE. That's one that seems to, for whatever reason, be limited by other physicians. But yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, we want to thank you so much. Um, you know, this is truly a healthcare ministry. You know, it we've is. seen how um, you both have uh, are very dedicated and compassionate uh, about your your work. But you know, you want to give back. You know, you with teaching young women and you, you know, serving our our community and uh, not serving our nation uh, in the ways that you do and we want to thank you for that we want to thank you for being here today and all the information that you have brought but please mention for our audience again where they can uh, where you're located the three uh, areas that you're located and a phone number to contact you sure so we have three offices again one in the Stone Oak area off of Hardy Oak on the northeast side at Topperwine and I-35 and at 410 and Village Drive near the Northeast Baptist Hospital. Our office number is 210-477-5151. You know, and quite often when we're discussing, you know, patients and they'll say, well, I have arthritis or I have, you know, this um, um, ailment, please let us know because we only have a few more minutes in, in this segment about patient confidentiality. And there's HIPAA rules, but a lot of people don't understand the HIPAA rules. Just tell them how they need to explain to you as their physician, as your as their uh, individual that will be prescribing medications and everything. They need to bring their medications, all their medications that they're taking to the visit and kind of let them know the expectations that you have when they come. The important things for patients to bring with them, first of all, the idea about the list of when and, and how the pain is being affecting them is important. But bottom line, we need to know what medications they're on, what allergies they have, to know what medications we may have to prescribe and whether there's any conflict. In addition, if they've had previous imaging studies like radiographs or x-rays or MRIs, CT scans, we want all that information because if we don't have it, it doesn't help us, you know, we need to put all these picture, all, the whole picture together with mm -hmm. the story of the injury as well as any imaging. So that's very important. And, and don't, you know, make sure we know all of the information about you because we need to help you. We need to know it all to do that. And it doesn't go anywhere else. It's your, it's your patient doctor confidentiality. And, and for example, one thing is important but with our group, we have a great group and if I have a complex issue or problem of a, of a patient, I'm going to talk to my partners about it, but they're not going to know who you are, mm -hmm. they're not going to have any idea. Right. They're going to help me from a, a standpoint of, because we work together, mm -hmm. we don't know everything. We learn together, we work <coughs> together and that helps us mm -hmm. to help the patient. It's a great concept. And that's, and that's kind of bottom line, mm -hmm. patient care. Well, I think we're blessed to have you guys here in our community. and. One of the things, just briefly, we only have a couple of minutes, but surgery for shoulders and for knees, what I'm hearing is that sometimes it's the last resort. You guys offer other interventions because people get nervous that if I go see a doctor, they're gonna wanna do surgery right mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I like from what I'm hearing, Chris, is that you guys offer, is that true, Dr. Lynch? Absolutely, and certainly there are some problems that you look at and say, okay, we're gonna have to do surgery with this, but mm -hmm. in general, especially with the overuse issues, we try to treat them conservatively first. Because if I can get you in physical therapy or give you one injection into your shoulder and you're gonna feel better and you can do everything you need to do, well then you certainly didn't need surgery. And so that's really important. I'm a very conservative and I'm only going to do surgery if I have to. There's definitely enough people that need the surgery that we yeah. can do surgery when we need to and not do it if we don't need to. Uh, and you know, we're military city USA and we have a lot of veterans here in our city. And Dr. Chance, uh, let, it, let our veterans know, because a lot of them deal with post-traumatic stress. You know, how you have been there, you've been uh, on the front line, you know what it's like, 
and how you welcome those type of veterans and you will treat them. Sure, uh, I, I'm very happy to serve any, uh, any of our veterans that need orthopedic care. Uh, that is a very important issue that I'm sensitive to. Um, it, it does a, you don't have to be uh, an infantryman to be affected by post-traumatic stress. And so it's, it, it's something I'm comfortable talking to patients about so uh, they should feel comfortable coming into the office. Well, thank you for that. Well, we all have done a great job. <laughs> it's come to the end of our show, and we want to thank you so much for being here uh, and to uh, answer all the questions that you did because we had quite a few questions on uh, different parts of the body, did we not? We sure did. We and, sure did. Uh, but, you know, you, the practice of orthopedic medicine, you know, uh, to me, when you were talking about different people have different pain levels and the way they're treated, each individual is um, taken for who they are, you know, uh, and so you treat the whole person. So we want to thank you for your dedication to medicine and thank you for coming to our community and serving uh, the residents here in our community. Until next week, we invite you to uh, tune in to Today's Ministries. Uh, have a great week. Have a blessed week. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. <laughs>